turn our attention to Trey Lance here, one of the biggest stories in the NFL. All season long will be that quarterback position for the 49ers. Just really interesting. Um, Trey Lance not good in the first game. We caveated it with uh, it was a monsoon out there. It was going to be tough for anyone, especially someone who maybe has trouble with their short Turn, short uh, passes accuracy. Yeah, right, exactly right. Um, so upon further review, a closer look at Trey Lance. Encouraging signs or no? <sighs> I'm, I'm going to still say no, but I don't want to be like – I don't want to be too judgmental yet. It, it was sloppy. It's about as tough as it gets as far as conditions for a football team and, a, and for a quarterback to throw. And it got even – you know, unfortunately for the 49ers – you know, it was sloppy early, then it kind of stopped, and the Bears came back and got ahead, and all of a sudden it was like, football gods will favor the Bears. And it started raining so hard that it was actually comical watching on film. You were like, holy – I mean, I was sitting there going, oh, my gosh. It's like worse than it looked on TV. You're like, I just can't even believe it's raining like this. But, hey, you know the concerns about throwing – Yes, it's well documented. I'm not the only one out there that has it. Does he make some throws that you go, wow? Yes. You know, he threw a deep cross uh, early in the game where you go, Oof, that's, that's a throw there. You know, threw a deep cross later in the game. He's more comfortable with throwing the ball down the field. That's one thing I will say to sh- if you like Shanahan listening. You know, ball down the field, ball outside the numbers. He looks more comfortable. He's more consistent throwing those type of throws than he is the, like you said, the short to intermediate passes where accuracy and precision are more important. There's less room for error on those. I know people think, oh, it's a shorter pass. No, there's. it's usually in a tight hole, a tight window. You know, the receiver's got a little bit of alligator arms that he's looking at, so you got to put it all in the right place there. Outside the numbers, things like that, hey, throw it out high and outside. Hey, it's not that bad. Throw it low and outside. Hey, Hey, it's not that bad. I mean, so there's some room or error there with that one. And that's what bothers me. You know, he missed some plays. And I think my biggest concern, because, I, I, again, the rain hurt the 49ers more than the Bears. It definitely did. The slowed 40, them down. Slowed them down. Without a doubt, Debo, Ayuk, all of those were all slowed down. Trey Lance even running that way. And also, too, this is why the 49ers are special and why we had them as one of our best rosters is not only are they one of the fastest teams in football, they're kind of one of the biggest teams in football and overpowering up front, too. And I think that that the slop and their inability to get footing hurt them a little bit as well. Hmm. But back to my point with Lance, the thing that I think bothers me the most is the lack of feel in the pocket, right? Like there's a play on the third drive of the football game, and I know you saw the notes here where he's got Debo on a little slot out route to the right. And, you know, they probably want to run that play against cover two. It's like an option out. He could probably, like, sit up in a hole. They got a guy that's running a corner over the top of him. And and he looks out there, and I want to go throw it because Debo was open. So he looks over there and throw it. But I do think he's a little scared to make some of these shorter intermediate throws he doesn't have the confidence to pull the trigger so he looks there but then he comes back to the other side and he's got a little concept that you know you saw me draw where there's it's a guy that runs a a straight go and and 15 um who is it is that mcleod or i can't i forget who 15 is i'm i'm still getting my numbers straight in the nfl uh, but either way, he's got a number like a release where he goes outside of the guy that was in front of him, and then he comes back underneath them like a slant route, right? It's wide open. Now, oh, that's Jennings, right? So Jennings there, thank you, Pete. He he looks to the right, he gets to the left. Now it's the look is there for Jennings, and he really should have been there from the start. He's got a little pressure and he's got to move, and he just doesn't have great feel for like again. You know, better quarterbacks in football can, oh, wait, this is the look I want. Okay, wait, I got a feel. Let me just find a little soft spot, subtle slide here and try. But he gets into, like, running back mode, right? He doesn't stay in a throwing position. He has no feel for the soft part of the the pocket. And then the other thing, too, Ahmed, is, you know, and this is where, again, he's still raw and learning. And and I do question whether it'll get there. I do. I'm not going to lie. But as a quarterback – You'll get a play called sometimes, and you're getting up behind the center, and you're going, oh, my gosh, the play, it, the play, it should be here against this coverage, right? 
Let me, oh man. So you get a little pressure and okay, I got to move in the pocket, but wait, this is the coverage. I know that I, we're, we're going to have something here. Let me just find a little spot so I can just set up real quick and throw it in a spot to where he can get it and we're going to get the play. But again, the eyes go down and the eyes go down. The ball goes almost into a running back position and he doesn't even give himself a chance there. That's what bothers me a little bit more than anything. So, um, you know, those are the flaws I saw. And of course the interception, yes, he just stared it down, plain yep. and simple. And Eddie Jackson's a hell of a football player and saw it and made the play. Well, that's the, uh, so it's the eyes. And you noted multiple times, not just staring down Eddie Jack or his receiver and right. Eddie Jackson was able to read his eyes, but the eyes in you, general, you said his eyes in general are looking at the rush. Yes. First and foremost. Yeah, please. You, you Sometimes I don't even know my themes as I write these down. So when you have tidbits like that, throw them out there. You're right. The eyes in general are a problem of having the feel for, wait, the play is going to work against this coverage. Let me keep my eyes downfield. And then the eyes go down to the pass rush way too much. You know, there's, I'm not mad if you look at the pass rush. But like Justin Fields or an Allen or a Mahomes, and again, I know that's – but Justin Fields is doing it already, where he drops back, he looks downfield, then he might look down real quick and assess what's around him and then tries to get him back up again, right? Lances go down, and it's just like, I'm going to run, and he doesn't ever get him back up, and that's where you, you're going to leave some plays on the field if that continues. But the one thing you noted that he does better than Jimmy Garoppolo did was throw those deep outside the numbers. Definitely. I mean, that's something we rarely, rarely saw with uh-huh. Jimmy Garoppolo, so that is that is a feather in the cap for, for Trey Lance. Yes, it is. And his running ability as well. Yes. But you noted it again this week, and you saw it last year. Yes. He's taken too many big hits on those too runs. Too many big hits. Yes, 100%. He just, he's got to learn to protect himself a little bit, and even when he scrambles and does that it's just there's hey we don't it, it doesn't need to be second and two and you get killed screw it's okay if it's second and five and you just got the five you know, that, that's where he's got to learn to just drop down slide a hair quicker or protect his body just a little bit more uh debo samuel was one of your top wide receivers where was he pete where where'd you ha- did you Number have him two, two? you right. had him just behind jamar right. chase ahead of justin jefferson right um, yeah, I forgot I wrote this. Where would he be in your top five running backs I, in the NFL? I, I, I mean, it's, it's crazy. I mean, the, the, his vision, his power, and his ability to stop and cut back against the grain. He is such a natural running back. It, it's really scary. Like, he's up there. I'm not going to say he's Saquon Barkley or Jonathan Taylor or that, but it ain't that far off. It's not. And they fed him the ball a lot. And then, you know, he can put his shoulder down because he's such a thick human being that he can run people over. I mean, ask poor Kyler Gordon on the Bears. When Debo ran that one touchdown in on the right side, I think he thought, well, I'll man him up and hit him. He's a receiver. And he got his ass ran over. And and I'm not trying to disrespect Kyler Gordon. Debo Samuel will run, you know, of course, us over and a lot of people over. So, uh, yeah, he is really good. And, I, hey, they paid him ride that horse, and now no Elijah Mitchell, I would think that they're going to continue to use him in that, that role. And he's got an incentive, I think, in his deal, too, where if he oh, runs a right. bunch, then he so gets the extra money. He gets a little extra I money. I forgot about that, right. So maybe they're like, all right, you yeah. like it, and you like it now. And so, I mean, he's just such a such a great weapon. He's so fun to watch. I think probably one of the hardest guys to bring down, it seems like, yeah. in the playoffs last year when he Definitely. wanted the extra five yards, he Definitely. got the extra five yards. Definitely. He just got a, he's, he's got a running back body like we talk about a lot. You know, he's one yep. of those receivers in football where you go, man, you know, I think 25 years ago, he'd have been a college running back. But, you know, uh, the kids kids are getting smarter and going, wait, the hell with that? My career only lasts five or six years. Let me play receiver. He's, he's kind of that guy. All right, so this week against Seattle, how much – Will your opinion ride on what you see here? Because, yes, you can caveat this last game. It was the rain, monsoon, first game of the year for yeah. the year that it is Trey Lance. Right. But if you see some of the same things, which, I mean, it's a lot of things to fix in, it, it in a week, um, how worried will you be if he has another down performance against Seattle this week? I'd be worried. I'd be worried. I will. If he does, it's another performance like that. And, again, I'm not expecting, like, 140 quarterback rating and four touchdowns or anything like that. I'm just – you know me. I just – hey, the plays that are there, let's take advantage of them. And then hopefully you can make a few plays outside the realm of the playbook here and there. I'm not looking to, and having trying to have unreal expectations that we're going to see, you know, a game here that's 30 for 35 for 380. That, that, that's not going to happen right now. But, um, you know, again, I think on their their home field, hopefully it won't be sloppy, a fast track. You know, they'll be able to create some plays. Now, my only concern with this is, and obviously they're better than Seattle, and it's really probably a good thing Seattle won because they won't be as edgy now, but is is Pete Carroll has, has shown a pretty good – 
propensity, I believe I used that the right way, for Shanahan's offense. He's one of the few guys in football I go, mm, he gives Kyle some problems. They did sweep the 49ers last year, which is crazy to say, right? He's got, I think, some of Kyle's tricks down a little bit and knows how to defend it. And, you know, early in this, their matchup career, it was not that way, right? I used to go, oh, I literally used to, like, say to Kyle when he was a young offensive player, I'd be like, Pete's scared of you. Like, when mm. you guys play Pete, he looks over the other sideline like, what the f*** is that play? Oh, my gosh, I don't know what to do to that, right? And he's got a feel now because he's smart and he's a hell of a football coach. But, yeah, this will be, this will be a, a very – intense week two yeah. got to have it type win for the 49ers and Trey Lance. Yeah, if the 49ers lose this game, that panic meter is going to go uh, going to go up. Big time. And the Jimmy G uh, chatter is going to go way up. Uh, the, they might have to tell people, Kyle might have to tell people to relax. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.